Welcome to the Greenbrier River Trail here in West Virginia. I'm in Cass at the north end of the trail, getting ready to follow the Greenbrier River all the way downstream. It's a beautiful day. Sun shining, little white puffy clouds. It's going to be a great day for a ride. See you down the trail. The Greenbrier Trail is a 77 mile rail trail through the Allegheny Mountains on the Monongahela National Forest. Some trail riders consider it to be the most scenic rail trail in America. This gravel trail is rich in wildlife and history and is a member of the Rail Trail Hall of Fame. At the north end of the trail, there's the Cass Scenic Railroad State Park. The trail passes through Greenbrier and Pocahontas County on its way to North Caldwell near Lewisburg at the south end. The trail follows the Greenbrier River, with Caspian at the north end is the high point on the trail. Yeah, this is a good one. I'm really looking forward to this. Built in the late 1800s by the Chesapeake and Ohio, or CNO Railroad, the line was designed to haul away the rich forest resources of the area. For about 100 years, the line carried freight and passengers, until 1978 when it was discontinued. Now, it's the longest and most scenic rail trail in West Virginia. It's like finding treasure in the mountains. What used to be industrial infrastructure is now bike packers paradise. At Cass, there's a scenic railroad state park, complete with an antique steam engine ready to take on a historic and scenic adventure. Take a walk around Cass, check out the railroad museum, and the old houses that were once part of the company town. Just like stepping back in time. The concrete posts with the big W's are there to remind the train conductor that there's a crossing and he needs to blow his whistle. One downside of an awesome trail like this, there's too many places to stop along the trail to look for your next favorite swimming hole or fishing hole and that just slows you down. The Monongahela National Forest is home to a rich diversity of animals and plants. I saw a bald eagle, but it wasn't quick enough for my camera to get a good shot. The lady I met said she saw a black bear. We found some wild azaleas in bloom this time of year. And watch out for the horseback riders and the apples they leave behind. The trail starts in Cass and follows the Greenbrier River downstream. I really didn't notice the downhill, but what I did notice was there was no uphill. The trail surface is crushed gravel. It's well maintained. I'm riding on 41s and having no problem at all. I'm sure much skinnier tires like 35s or even 32s would do the job as well. The trail is mostly double track. So for a conventional bicycle, no problem. But this trail would be tough on a trike. There's a thick strip of grass right down the middle of the trail. So most riders start here at Cass and follow the river downstream, slowly dropping in elevation. The 25 mile section south of Cass, just north of Marlinton, is considered the most scenic part of the trail. It goes through Clover Lick and the Sharps Tunnel. The Hall of Fame Rail Trail should definitely have a tunnel, and this one has two, and about 25 bridges. South of Clover Lake, you'll find Sharp's Tunnel and Bridge. The 500 foot tunnel, built in about 1900, has a sharp curve in it, so when you enter the tunnel, you can't really see the other side right away. You gotta get about halfway through the tunnel before you can see the exit. The bridge on the other side of Sharp's Tunnel is about 300 feet long, and it crosses the Greenbrier River. Now you're on the other side of the river. As you come into Marlinton, be sure to check out the old water tank. It was built in 1923 and was just recently restored. It's the only remaining water tank along the trail. There's plenty to see and do in Marlinton, and lots of places to stop and get a bite to eat. There's even a bike shop with a coffee shop built inside. It's called the Dirt Bean. 
The trail also winds its way past several state forests like Seneca and Watoga, Calvin Price, and the Greenbrier River State Forest. It's a deciduous forest, so there's plenty of oak, hickory, and maple here in the Monongahela, all nestled in the heart of the Allegheny Mountains. In my pen ears, I stashed some food and water for the day. It's not always something close to the trail to find food and water. I've got a tire repair kit, a spare inner tube, and a couple extra tools, just in case. I've got an extra layer of clothes, just in case it gets cold. You never know, in the mountains. And of course, I'm carrying some camera equipment. I'm trying to take as much video along the way as I can. And then of course, I got my drone. It's like a flying camera. 10 years ago, you'd have to rent a helicopter to get shots like these. I tell you, the Greenbrier River Trail definitely lives up to its Hall of Fame status. Riding the old rail line with the river on one side and a steep forest covered slope on the other side really boxes you in. Makes it easy to step back in time and imagine yourself riding the rails in old West Virginia. Everywhere you look, there's old railroad artifacts. There's plenty of history here. As for today, pedaling along on the near level trail is pure joy. Watching the river flow by and exerting just enough power to keep your bike going is a cyclist's dream. No train, no tracks, no cars, no trucks, no worries. Just pedaling along on the greatest human powered vehicle ever invented and watching the scenery roll on by. Riding a rail trail through an eastern deciduous forest can sometimes produce what they call the green tunnel effect. And that can happen here too on the Green Briar Trail. But every once in a while, the canopy gives way to a panoramic view that's classic West Virginia. South of Beard, you'll find the Droop Mountain Tunnel, the 400 footer with a sharp curve in the middle. Built in 1900 and cut through solid rock. Make sure you bring a flashlight. And there's plenty of places to stop. Take off your shoes and give your feet a dip in a cool Appalachian River. Gives your feet something to dream about too. It's a beautiful day down here on the Green Briar, right here in the heart of West Virginia. There's more than one way to enjoy the Greenbrier River. We saw folks hiking, canoeing, kayaking, swimming, fishing, all kinds of things. There's plenty of peace and solitude down here on the Greenbrier River. So this one's definitely got to go on the must-do list. It's not a super long trail, but I could see doing it in two or three days as a bikepacking trip. Pack in your own provisions for some picture-perfect riverside camping. I was especially impressed with the number of campsites, picnic areas, and trailside rest stops. For someone wanting to get away on a long weekend of bikepacking, this trail is ideal. The Greenbrier Trail not only has great campsites, but it has great swimming holes too. Bring a fishing pole and your favorite swimming trunks. If you don't like to camp out, there's plenty of other lodging options too. Not only does cold water flow downhill, but cold air flows downhill too. And it flows right down the same draws that the water flows. Even some of the picnic tables and park benches were placed strategically where cold air just drains out the hillside. It gives you a welcome blast of nature's air conditioning. So yeah, this trail could probably be done much quicker. Maybe even in one day from start to finish. But I'm breaking it up into three days. First day, I rode from Cass to Marlinton, which is about 25 miles. On uh, day two, I rode from Marlinton down to Rennick. It's about 30, 31 miles or so. And then on the third and final day, I rode from Rennick to North Caldwell, 
and that's the southern terminus of the trail. It's about another 20 miles or so. Truth is, my wife and I are staying at Airbnbs and doing the trail in little sections. Well, that's the Greenbrier River Trail. I can see why it's a Hall of Fame trail. It's got everything you could want. It's got scenery, it's got history, it's got great views and campsites. I think I'm coming back here in the fall when the colors are changing. It's got to be spectacular. The Greenbrier River Trail. It's one of the finest rail trails in America. Come ride it yourself and find out why it's in the Rail Trail Hall of Fame. But anyway, I hope to see you down the trail. Thanks for watching. Now go ride your bike. Good morning. I'm in Salem, West Virginia, and I'm getting ready to ride the North Bend Rail Trail. The North Bend is a 72-mile rail trail from Parkersburg to Wolf Summit near Clarksburg in West Virginia. It's part of the 5,500-mile Coast-to-Coast America Discovery Trail. We're starting here in Salem and heading west. Yeah, it's a nice cool day. A little bit of cloud cover, but it should be a great day for riding. Here we go. West Virginia has some awesome rail trails. I just got finished riding the Greenbrier River Trail. And so while I'm here in West Virginia, I figured I'd ride the North Bend Trail and see how the two compare. So why West Virginia? For one thing, it's my wife's home state. And like her, it's beautiful and mysterious. It's one thing, but there's a surprise around every corner. We're in the heart of the Appalachian Mountains. They're not as tall as the Rockies, nor are they snow peaked, but they're very steep and covered in forest. Eastern deciduous forest with some of the richest biodiversity in North America. The people of West Virginia are as rugged and resilient as the landscape they inhabit. There's a sense of freedom and independence here that runs deep. West Virginia is wild and wonderful. It's a mountaineer state. And remember, a mountaineer is always free. This rail line was built in 1853 by the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad. The rail line was abandoned, and by 1989, they started turning it into a multi-use rail trail for hikers, bikers, and horseback riders. My early scouting report tells me that the easternmost section on the trail is pretty rough. Might be under construction, and it's not really worth riding. So I'm gonna start at Salem and ride west toward Parkersburg. Salem's at a higher elevation anyway, so overall, you're slightly going downhill the whole way. Well, you're not going downhill the whole way, but from east to west, there's more downhills than there are uphills. This trail's not entirely level all the way. There are some ups and downs, but no grade greater than 3%. Still, that's not too bad. Riding west of Salem, the trail is coarse gravel, not crushed stone like a lot of bike paths. This gravel trail surface has a reputation for being a bit rough in spots, so fat tires are definitely the way to go. It's really no worse than any gravel road. It's not ideal, but it's definitely rideable. I'm glad I'm riding on my 41s. I don't think my skinny tire bike would handle it. The trail follows a transportation and industrial corridor. There's a nice view of the refinery from the trail. 
There's a lot of little towns here in West Virginia that just kind of do things at their own pace. So is it Smithburg or Smithton? This trail boasts 10 tunnels and 35 bridges as it takes you through some classic West Virginia scenery and some good old West Virginia small towns like Salem, West Union, Greenwood, Pennsboro, and Carroll. You know, it brings up thoughts of John Denver, you know. Um, country roads take me home, you know, to the West Virginia and mountain mamas and, you know, take me home. Country roads, you know the tune. There's lots of tunnels and bridges along this section. There's a lot to check out to slow you down. Some of the tunnels are long enough, and about halfway through, it gets pitch black. So make sure you bring your headlamp. Oh yeah, and I was warned. There's one tunnel, there's a possibility that it might be slightly haunted, I'm not sure. I'm not one to usually believe in those sorts of ghosts, but if I see anything strange, I'll be sure to report it. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't, I don't. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in ghosts. Between West Union and the Ritchie County line, there's definitely some rough spots. Mile after mile on this chunky gravel can really rattle your bones. If you're used to riding on rough gravel, I'm sure this trail is no problem at all. But if you're used to riding on nice smooth pavement, this trail can be a challenge. By the end of the day, you start feeling just about every bump on the trail. There's places to eat in Salem, West Union, Pennsboro, Ellenboro, and Carroll. There's a small trailside campsite there in West Union. In 1923, the biggest train robbery in the history of train robberies happened here at Central Station. It can get pretty gritty going through Ellenboro. There's a nice big truck parking lot and those trucks can really kick up some dust. Once you get west of Ellenboro and away from US Highway 50, the scenery along the trail completely changes. Once you're away from the main highway and all that traffic noise, you can start to hear the birds again. There's quiet and solitude at the North Bend State Park, one of the highlights along the trail. There's camping, cabins, and a lodge at the State Park in case you need accommodations. There's also a nice restaurant at the lodge. In the 1950s, Bonds Creek was the site of a deadly train wreck killed two people and injured 40 others. One of the neatest towns along the trail is Carroll. Yeah, that's how they say it, Carroll. It has a classic West Virginia look and feel to it, and the people are super friendly. If you're hungry, you better grab a bite to eat at Carroll, because there's really no services between Carroll and Parkersburg. There's a small trailside campsite there at Petroleum. I went through the Silver Line Tunnel, you know, the one that's supposed to be haunted. I did see a weird sight in the tunnel. There was a water stain way at the far end of the tunnel that kind of reflected light. It didn't really appear to move, but when you got right up on it, the reflected light kind of disappeared. So I suppose if you were really wasted and you were traveling way too fast, and you really used your imagination. I suppose a reflected water stain could look like a ghost, but man, you'd really have to be wasted. The rest of the trail is really pleasant and quiet. As you get closer to Parkersburg, the trail definitely gets more residential, especially as you follow along the Kanawha River. The Kanawha River is kind of nice, but really there's no access points to it along the trail. Mile marker one at Happy Valley is the western terminus of the North Bend Trail. The North Bend Trail is a fine bike packing trail. It's got just enough camping for those who like their bike packing a little rough. The towns along the way are quaint 
comfortable and classic West Virginia. North Bend State Park is definitely worth a visit. The best part of the trail though are all the tunnels and bridges. They're awesome. The 10 tunnels and 35 bridges definitely make this trail worth doing. West Virginia's got some great rail trails and this is just one of them. I hope to see you down the trail. Thanks for watching. Now go ride your bike. So this is the tale of two trails in West Virginia, the Hall of Fame Greenbrier River Trail and the Wild and Woolly North Bend Trail. So how do the Greenbrier River Trail and the North Bend Trail compare? They're both about the same length, somewhere between 72 and 77 miles long. They both go through eastern deciduous forest. And they both go through some awesome small West Virginia towns. The Greenbrier River Trail is a member of the Rail Trail Hall of Fame, and for good reasons. It follows a beautiful natural corridor, the Greenbrier River. It's a very scenic trail. Most of it is on Monongahela National Forest. The North Bend Trail follows a transportation corridor almost the entire way. And the sound of traffic is usually not far away. US Highway 50 is also an industrial corridor. Although the North Bend Trail is not as scenic as the Greenbrier River Trail, it provides an excellent escape for bicycles from motorized traffic, and it's definitely worth riding. I thought the Greenbrier River Trail had a smoother surface than the North Bend Trail. The North Bend Trail has some pretty chunky gravel through some sections, and it can really rattle your bones. Overall, I'd give the Greenbrier River Trail an A+. It's one of the finest rail trails out there. The North Bend Trail is a little less scenic and a little rougher, but I'd still give it a solid B because it's a really good rail trail. And the tunnels and bridges really make it worth checking out, especially the section between Ellenboro and Parkersburg. A B is still a good grade, and the North Bend Trail is definitely worth the effort. While I'm still recovering, I hope to ride many more rail trails before the summer's over. So, from West Virginia, I hope to see you down the trail. Thanks for watching. Now go ride your bike.